Hey everyone, wanted to talk about memory cards today. I know I got my Shiloh New Z8 and I've been wondering what memory card I should get for this camera. And as I'm thinking about that, I figured you guys must be thinking the same thing as well. So I wanted to make this video to talk about which memory card that I found that I think you guys would be interested in if you want to get the best performance out of your Nikon Z8. Since the Nikon Z8 launch, many of us have had Pi Nikon cameras that use XQD and CFexpress format. So we've been wondering, what's the best memory card we can use? If you're like most, you've had some memory cards laying around and you just picked that up, popped in the camera and started using it. But then you've seen videos telling you that the card you're using may not be the best, whether it's due to performance or overheated. But as luck would have it, new memory cards are becoming on the market. Now, of course, if you're not looking, you probably don't realize what these memory cards are and how much they can improve the performance of your camera. Let me show you something that I've been using. This is the Angelbird CF Express Type B card. And let's get a bit closer here. As you can see, it's 1700 megabytes per second. Now I purchased this card back in 2022 when I started my travel. Well, prior to starting my travel, and I got it for about 400 bucks. It was about 100 bucks at the time, and the price got dropped on Amazon, and I picked it up. And it's been a pretty good card since then. However, since I've been utilizing with the Z8, and I've been doing more videos, I got a hot card one in. Quicker than I would have expected, because I figured, you know, this is a one terabyte card. It's Angelbird. It was working fine in my Z6 II. Why is it overheating? Well... As you've seen in some videos, depending on where you are, your card may get warmer quicker than other cards. Well, I did some research, and what I found out is there's some new 2.0 cards that have been coming out in the market. And now, there's some even newer ones that are coming out. So, camera manufacturers are up in their specs, and while they're doing that, the card manufacturers will also have to come out and with uh, upgraded cards to manage the heat for these new cameras. So one of the ones that I've been looking at, I found, and it was kind of excited, but it is pricey, is Deck Storage. Deck Storage, I remember hearing Matt uh, Granger talk about it. It's a Japanese brand. It's supposed to be the fastest card that was out. And when I say fastest, it's fastest as far as sustained read and write speed. Because when you look at memory cards, most of them show you the burst speed. And, you know, I think that's kind of annoying because a lot of time we buy a card, it's like, hey, this thing goes 1,700, 1,800 megabytes per second. You're like, yay, this is great. Yeah, that's max burst speed. Some of them should go, you know, 1,000, 1,200 or so, but I've seen tests where they run between 400 and a little bit over 1,000. So with the newer cards, some of them are specifying what they can run at. There is something new, there's a new specification it's called VGP400. And this new specification basically guarantees that the card should give you a sustained write speed of 400 megabytes per second. Well, that sounds kind of on the low side, but that is pretty much good for writing all the way up to 8K. So I can't tell if it's 8K60, it probably is an 8K60 internally, it's probably gonna be 8K2425. But of course, we know our cameras can go a bit faster than that. So to guarantee performance, sometimes you want to have the fastest card. With that being said, let's talk about some of the cards that I've come across that meet the specifications that you may be interested in. I'll tell you this, they're not cheap. But later on in the video, what I will do is I'll talk about some of the 2.0 specification cards that do not have the VGP400 rated that has been tested and performed very well in testing and will be very good for your Nikon Z8 or since I also use Sony cameras if you're using one of the Sony cameras I can go all the way up that level as well there's some type A cards out there that I'll mention later on in the video all right so let's get into what I found let's start with this card Exascent it's a brand probably most of us never heard of. It's not one of the ones that you've considered to be a top card. And typically when I've seen them around, they've been priced on a cheaper side, so they were paid much attention. But I did see a review on this card that they were the first to come out with a VGP400 rated card. And 
the card that they came out with was called Nitro. This thing is like ridiculously fast. It says it's 1850 uh, megabytes per second sustained read speed and 1700 sustained write speed. That's crazy. I mean, that's like next level stuff. And usually when you see this kind of numbers written on your CF Express card, that's like not sustained, but like burst speed. This card is rated up to 12K and it's basically rec um, recommended for red cameras. It's $819 for a uh, one terabyte. And of course, as we know, prices change. So currently this is what it's at on Amazon. It could go less than that. It could be more than that, but we'll see. And from what I've seen listed, it's only like a 512 and a one terabyte version. So that's some ridiculous speed, but it's something you check out. If you're interested in this card, it seems to have really good specifications, really good rating. And they were, the, again, the first that have the VGP 400 rating. That's like a new specification that I mentioned that at a minimum 400 megabytes per second is what it should use. So being able to do up to 12K, your Z8s and your A7R5 and whatever Sony camera you have out there for video, you will be fine. That, that, that Sony uses CF Express type A, yeah, I shouldn't say Sony because Sony, as far as I know, they don't list one for this, the type A. This is only for type B, so I apologize for that. And it's a five-year warranty on this one, IP67 rating. So they've got some pretty good stuff to go along with it as well. In addition to the uh, Nitro, there's another one called Archon. And Archon is rated up to two terabytes, 1700 megabytes per second. Um, sustained read speed and 1600 megabytes per second write speed <laughs> this is crazy man this is not something that I'm used to seeing and I can tell you this XSend again as a brand not someone I've heard of but they seem to be kicking butt when it comes to these new generation of cards so if you are someone who wants to have the top spec performance that's a card you should look at and the Archon version seems to be really, really good. This Archon card is also uh, compatible with the Z9, and if it's with the Z9, it should be compatible with the Z8 as well. So you got a really good card there. They have a one terabyte version and a two terabyte. I found the two terabyte version on Amazon for $729. I haven't seen the one terabyte listed, but it's probably gonna come online at some point. So something to keep in mind. Also from XSend, they also have another one called Essential. And that's probably a little bit better price-wise for most people. Um, again, it depends on you know how much space you need and what you're going to do. At least this one starts from 512 and goes all the way to two terabyte. So that's another one to consider as well. 1800 megabytes read and 1700 megabytes write. Let's talk Lexar. This is a brand that I've been familiar with. I've owned cards and I've used them over the years and not have any issues with them. They have professional series and they have like your standard series. So now there's a diamond series. I don't recall a diamond series before, but this diamond series is also VGP 400 rated. This one has a read speed, sorry, write speed of 1900 megabytes per second and a read speed of 17 megabytes per second with a sustained write of 1600 megabytes per second. So that's pretty quick. As I said before, some of these cards, they go up to 1900 megabytes per second. That's pretty fast. But again, remember it's burst speed testing. You usually don't get you all the way up there, but then when you utilize the camera, you make it the speed of the camera can handle it. In addition to that, this one is none um, VGP 400 rated, but still something that's pretty good. And that's their gold series. Most of us know the Gold Series, it was, at least in my mind, that's the top level that I bought. It was Gold Series from Lexar, Lexar Professional. Again, good speed, good quality, never had any failures with those cards. And they carry up to two terabytes in this size. So the next card I have for you was one I've been looking at buying myself. It's Next Storage. Matt Granger mentioned this one, that it was a really good card at the time. And when the Z8 launched, I was like, yep, I want that card. But when I looked it up, phew, very pricey. So it's not one I can find here in Malaysia. Um, 
I couldn't find it in Hong Kong when I looked around either. So I think, you know, it's probably coming out to different vendors soon here in Southeast Asia, but in the USA, on Amazon and b and you can find it. So check that out. Now, let's talk about this one. What I really like about this one, their burst speed, 1950 megabytes per second on the read, 1900 on the write speed. That's pretty awesome. But even more also, minimum sustained write speed is 1800 megabytes per second write speed. That, that is what got my juices flowing. I was like, I want that. So SanDisk also has a professional um, VGP400 rated card. This one's a little bit odd. I was not going to include it, but I figured I can throw it in there as well because the price on it isn't too bad. For uh, 256 it's 299 You know, again, this it may not seem like it's really that inexpensive, but then we're talking about high quality cards. The specifications in this one states that it can do up to 1400 megabytes per second write speed and 1700 megabytes per second read speed. So that's on the burst speed. In testing, what people have found is that on the um, sustained write speed, it hovers somewhere between the 400 and 500 megabytes per second, never going below the 400. So it's sustained at 400 but it was kind of odd it didn't you know bump up to that high speed like some of the other ones do it's on the lower side consistently on the lower side but again it meets the specification vgp 400 it's just not as high as the other one so if you're um a fan of the brand and something that you want to look at you know you may want to look at it so angelbird has a number of cards that they list out there cf express 2.0 rated they have four that are listed the av pro the av pro sx the av pro and av pro xt all of them list a 1785 megabytes per second read speed and a max write speed of 1550 megabytes per second with a sustained write speed of 1300 megabytes per second two of them i think that most of us would be interested in and that's going to be the cf express mark v av pro and the AV Pro XT. Those seem to be the faster ones out of the two and they have high capacity cards as well. So if you are looking for something with really great sustained read and write speed, Angel Express, sorry, Angel Bird, CF Express Type B is one you should consider. It's been well known in the, in the industry and a lot of people swear by it. Check it out. Going into the regular standard stuff now. Delkin Black. This one is something I think we can add to the list as well. It has a max read speed of 1800 megabytes per second, and it's listed here as a sustained sequential write speed of 1560 megabytes per second. They didn't list a max um, read speed, but sustained 1560. That's good, that's, that's pretty good. This is not a VGP 400 specifications, but the speed seem to be along those lines. So this is definitely something that we can look at and add to a list of cards that we should consider. They also have what's called a Power G4 memory card. And the Power G4 seems to be something new. I don't know much about it, but based from what they're saying on the site, it can record up to 8K and it has a max transfer speed up to 780 megabytes per second max write speed up to 700 1700 megabytes per second sustained write speed if you get the 128 gigabyte to 512 gigabyte card that's 805 megabytes per second the 650 up to 2 terabyte is 1490 megabytes per second so these are pretty good speeds not sure why they didn't get the vgp 400 specifications maybe they will fall below that that's why they can't actually put that on the card but definitely something that we can look at to add to our list of um, memory cards that you want to purchase pro grade digital now this is a brand that also is recommended by nikon 
the Cobalt series seems to be a very good one out there. It's not VGP400 rated, although I think it should be, because looking at the specifications of this one, it states read speed of 1700 megabytes per second, write speed of 1500 megabytes per second, and a sustained write speed of 1400 megabytes per second. Pretty good stuff, right? So you can get all the way from 165, 325 to 650. No terabyte, no two terabyte, no 1.3 terabyte. But again, depending on your needs and your budget, these cards will probably suit you. So as we're talking pro grade, let's jump over to the Sony side because they also make some type A cards for Sony cameras. And if you record high quality videos, that's the kind of card that you want to use 8k 4k you know that 4k you don't really need that but you can also bump up to like the high quality 4k some of the cameras can do 6k internal and the high level cameras you can do more here's another one i have this is called uh, lexar professional and it is a 900 megabytes per second read speed with a 800 megabytes per second write speed it has a vgp 400 um, label on it so it should be good, but they say it should have a minimum write speed of 700 megabytes per second. That's pretty darn good. If you record in 6K, 8K in camera, this is something that's going to be very useful on your Sony cameras. Of course, you know, they should be compatible with um, high heat temperatures as well. Most of these cards, these new versions, you know, they come in with better specification to handle heat and also to sustain for long write periods without having any issues. So definitely this is one that you want to consider. It is on the pricey side as well. As I mentioned before, these VGP 400 cards are always going to be on the pricey side, but it's something that you definitely want to look into if you are someone who records for a long period of time. I kept this one for last because I figured you guys would want to be interested in this one, but pricey. This is the only one I've been able to find. It's a pro-grade digital CF Express Cobalt Type B 4.0. Yes, my friends, 4.0. This is a 1.3 terabyte card. It's listed at 1,459.99 USD. Never seen this before. Didn't even know it existed out there. I was shocked when I saw this. I mean, the specification was just like, talked about last week it's been you know uh on the web that yeah they have a new specification 4.0 on what could be theoretically possible for memory cards and here it is so what are the specifications of this card it has 3400 megabytes per second on the read speed and 2800 megabytes per second on the write speed that's freaking crazy now they didn't list a sustained speed on here but at that level wow that's yeah this is like next level stuff never knew this thing existed but again if you got deep pockets and you want to be the first in line to get the new generation speeds well here you go there's one out there from pro grade that you can pick up and well whenever it's available and get some really awesome speeds on this one. Look at the specifications though. It did say um, read speed of 3,400 megabytes per second, write speed of 3,000 megabytes per second. So maybe that speed that's listed on the card is a sustained, oh yes, it is. Sustained write speed of 2,800 megabytes per second. Wow, okay. That's <laughs> next level stuff. Hopefully, you guys like the list that I put together different cards. I'm gonna put links below for Amazon if you wanna order these things. And you can, if you're someone who wants the high spec created for your cards for video or for burst speech for shooting, these cards will more than satisfy. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you purchase one, also let me know. Again, I have links from Amazon. I'm not an Amazon affiliate. I appreciate if you guys utilize the link and purchase it. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you find this information useful and you go out there and pick up one of these cards or two and enjoy shooting with your camera, whether it's video or photo. These cards are gonna serve you very well. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.